Traditionally, future doctors would train for surgery on a cadaver, but with advancements in technology, students are trading in their scalpel for a computer. Technology has really played an incredible role, uh, really in all aspects of my life, in particular in the clinical realm. Uh, that's one of the things that we see changing almost on a daily basis. The uh, whole area of my research and, and the involvement of my research is something that people would classify, I think, as the sort of the bleeding edge of technology. The name of the project is the Validation Dissemination of Temple Bone Dissection. And we're really looking at the impact of how simulation technology can be used for education and training. I met Don Stredney, and uh, he sort of came to our department and said, you know, these are the kinds of things we can do with computers. Do you think there's anything that, that you would be able to apply in the clinical realm? So we started to do some early studies just on looking at visualization of skull-based tumors in three dimensions and how that may help us design certain types of uh, surgical approaches. As the computers got faster and, and we were able to interact with the data on a near real-time basis, the whole idea of simulation and simulating surgery became obvious that that would, should be the next step for us. We obviously had to simulate the visual attributes of the environment, the force attributes back to their hand through the device and then also emulation of the changes in sound. This is the temple bone surgery simulator that we're working on, and it takes CT scan data from cadavers, people that donated their body to science. I started on this project as an undergrad at Ohio State, and then when I became a graduate student, this became my project, and I've been working a lot on not only doing the graphics, but also the haptic feedback for this project. The word haptics comes from the Greek word haptikos, which means feeling. But there's also kinesiology, which is how your body perceives forces coming back through your joints and your joint positions of your arms. This is a phantom joystick made by a company called Sensible and it uses motors inside to actually give you a feedback when you hit something in the computer. So you, you can move this and you hit the bone with the joystick and you can actually feel the resistance in here. This surgery is done under a microscope, so the movements are very fine motor movements that are done with a little bit of the wrist, but predominantly just moving the fingers. I've developed some bleeding simulation and water simulation to have it even more realistic than even the type of testing they use right now. In the cadaver bone, you can dissect it and not get any blood, even though you're doing something wrong and hitting a major blood vessel. But in the simulation, you have the potential to show right away with the bleeding that something has gone wrong. And now you have to learn how to think on your feet and what would you do in that particular situation. And as you can imagine, easily surmise, it's better for us that they learn this in a simulated environment than in actual practice. Long term, I think, is that we would be able to provide a, a pretty seamless simulation. The goal is to have better trained surgeons that have a lot more experience when they're out there graduating and starting to work as a full-time attending surgeon or, or not in a training program anymore. That it would be realistic enough that it would engage uh, more sophisticated users and that also would then allow for a translation of patient-specific information into the simulator so now the simulation can actually be used for pre-operative assessment and pre-surgical planning. I had almost no medical knowledge uh, except for high school biology classes coming into this. I'm not a computer programmer. I know some things about it. I understand some of their vocabulary and over the years they've been able to understand some of my vocabulary but, but really the project is truly multidisciplinary. In some small way I serve as a translator myself coming from the College of Medicine but then getting involved through my graduate studies in computer visualization to kind of integrate those and, and help translate some of the various languages to each other. Without the expertise from the doctors and the, the medical experts, this project would never have been successful. 
I was incredibly impressed by the program here at Ohio State. It, it traditionally has been one of the top in the country. There's just probably nowhere else in the world that I would be able to assemble the same group of people with expertise uh, that we have here available on campus here in Columbus. I think that's the exciting aspect of interdisciplinary research because it takes everybody a little bit uh, off center and uh, gets them to learn the different aspects of such a project. They have a saying in training with some of the younger generation that, that is coming in. They call them Nintendo surgeons. Medical students and residents that are coming uh, are more comfortable with computer technology. So in a lot of cases, they're asking for it. However, I don't want to trivialize the complexity of what they're doing. Surgical interaction with the human body is a very complex thing. And I think what excites us is the idea of simulating complex environments that are believable, and most importantly, usable. With training, but with maintenance of skills and certification of skills, uh, it's just uh, incredible what the potential is for it.